Hi, I'm Roxanne Rose. I'm the Director of Learning here at Bellingham Christian School. We're excited that all of our classrooms through first through eighth grade this coming year are going to be multi-age classrooms. We've actually been using multi-age classrooms here at Bellingham Christian School since 2016. We want you to understand why we are choosing multi-age as a way of organizing our classrooms. Multi-age has so many benefits. One of the benefits that's one of the most profound is that you see this team approach. At the end of this year, I asked students to write down their idea of what a multi-age class meant to them. You really get to know your teacher and your teacher really gets to know you. They see how you learn and they match your level. Another student wrote, I love the sense of unity we all have where we don't judge one another, but we know we're all on the same team. I think these quotes from students reminded me of the sense of team and unity and community that we strive for regardless of age, regardless of level of learning, that we're in this together, we're here to be unified and working together on our learning as a whole. The biggest benefit of having multi-age is having those kids for two years and the relationship that you get to build with them. Instead of getting ready to pass them off to the next teacher, just when you really know them and just when they're um, feeling comfortable, you get to start all over again. You get to start a new year with them and you are picking up right where you left off. Having a two-year model is so wonderful because as a teacher you get to know the kiddo, their personality, their strengths, their areas of growth, and then the next year you, you get to like hit the ground running. It's so productive. When you start off the year with half of your class knowing um, what the routines are of the class, knowing what the expectations are, um, knowing what those rhythms are that often take like one to two months to establish in a new class. When you have half the class already aware of those and already functioning in that rhythm, the, the other students that are new coming in, they just fall right into that place. They're seeing it modeled for them all around them. And so that beginning of the year just goes so much smoother and it takes so much less time to really dig into the the meat of learning and the meat of working together in a classroom. So I get to take them so much farther than what I would in the past when I just had students for one year. So many times it has been so beneficial to be able to speak into areas of strengths but also challenges that come up with kids. Um, having strong parent teacher communication that's already been established has been such a blessing in resolving things that have come up that need help from both home and school. Fifth and sixth is a sweet spot. <laughs> they're not really little and they're not quite seventh and eighth graders. So having the opportunity to have repeated kids for more than a year um, provides relationship and accountability in a different way. Whatever is specific to taking them to the next level in their spelling, that's where students are able to work. And um, the sorts are one of the ways that they can do this, everybody working at their own level. So you might have seen some sorts where students are matching pictures with words that are all part of the same word family. You might have seen other sorts where um, students are working with really challenging blends, like three letter blends at the beginning of a word or the end of a word. And um, this is just one of the examples how in a multi-age classroom you can differentiate, you can really meet students at the place that they're at and um, take them to their next steps. One day a week students are working on math facts. We have a variety of ways to learn their math facts and we have a variety of levels that kids are working on in their math facts. So some students might be brushing up on their addition and subtraction facts. Some students are working hard at getting to the next place in their learning for multiplication. And some students are working on division. Some might have already graduated through all those facts, know them well, and they're working on doing something called mystery math where they're putting them uh, and applying them to a puzzle type situation. Wherever you're at is an okay place to be, but it's not an okay place to stay. So kids know where they're going as learners, as a teacher, I have clear expectations for where I want them to be by the end of the year, but different kids are taking different pathways to get there. And when they have that vision, 
they get excited about learning. We have a storyline that we want to look for God, we want to listen to God, and we want to respond to God. And we want to do that in real ways that meet the real needs of real people. Our storyline this year was Joy in the Journey. And this guides us in our learning throughout the entire year. We talk about our journey with Jesus, our journey with others, and our journey with self. And so this guided us as we went through our understanding and our learning in academic subjects, in friendships, in our relationship of, with God and what it means to know the creator of the world who calls us his children. A lot of the skills will repeat, which makes sense. We still work on reading every year and spelling every year and writing, and, um, but our content does change. Every year, students have new curriculum. So each year, as a teacher, we know we have an A year and a B year, and we flip back and forth between those two years of curriculum. So students are never receiving the exact same curriculum and learning the same subjects year after year. So every year should have a fresh sense of learning. The content that they're learning for social studies, science, Bible, um, the different areas is different the first year than the second year. They're not repeating anything. A misconception some parents have is that if they have a student on the older age range in a multi-age classroom, they're going to be bored. As a parent, you might think that your kid's not going to get the attention that they need. But I can tell you, that's just not the case. Um, with the way that our board and our administration structure classrooms, it's highly intentional. And with the freedom that we get with multi-age is we can combine kids not just based on their chronological age. Why is age the only factor? It shouldn't be. Um, we're not just our age, we're a bunch of things. And with multi-age, we can shape that dynamic. And that's exciting to see that kids who come in maybe um, higher than a specific grade level band says they need to be are not just going to be sitting steady all year. Wherever they're at is an okay place to be, but it's not an okay place to stay. Those students need to be challenged whether they're one to two to three grade levels ahead in whatever subject they're working on. Another misconception that parents often have is that their student will be sitting in wait, just silently reading, while the teacher is working with the other grade level students. And that could be furthest from the truth. We're all working on the same subjects, but in a broad range of levels. So we might all be le learning about ecosystems and biomes. Some students might be working on building a solid paragraph about the biome of their choice, while other students might be incorporating technology and building a project on the computer to show their learning, while another student or group of students might be having a small conference time with the teacher on how to write an introduction to a five paragraph paper on the biome of their choice. So students are all working on biomes at the same time, but as a teacher, I am working in and amongst students as they are working on their learning in a variety of ways. One of the other misconceptions that we often face is um, the thought that the kids won't be able to relate to each other, that first graders and second graders um, won't, that the younger first graders won't be able to connect with the older second graders. And um, what we find is that it's actually a much more nurturing environment. We will see that um, our second graders might be the ones that, because of the comfort level they have, are more welcoming. But most of the time, the students aren't very aware of who's in first grade and who's in second grade. In, in our multi-age classroom, we don't actually refer to the students as first graders and second graders. Um, we might refer to them as groups because they're really at, in different groups based on what they're working on. Now that you've been able to hear some of the advantages of multi-education from our teachers, I want you to know that there's also just some practical advantages. For example, we're able to have teachers team together more. So now by having multi-age teams, we're able to really have teacher teams as well. In addition, they have time to encourage each other and also to sharpen their skills. 
Um, we're always better when we can work together as a team. I hope this video has helped dispel some of the myths that you had about multi-age education, and I hope that it's just built an excitement for this upcoming school year. We are excited and we can't wait to see you in the fall.